Hey y'all, it's Edru Sankofa. Thank you for coming to my channel today. I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to be doing a reading of a um, poem that I wrote recently. Uh, it was published in a, a journal of um, American higher education. And this is a little bit different for me. This is um, a piece of creative scholarship. It is really personal. Um, comes from life experience, um, but also seeing myself reflected in others that I was able to find in online spaces for Black women with ADHD. And uh, thank you to Black Girl Lost Keys. Renee, you know what you're doing is phenomenal. And one of the first places that I found when I started to feel this really, really, really rough feeling of being like without any kind of rooting and groundedness in my education. One of the first spaces that I found was Renee's blog. I'm gonna link it in the description box, but I wanted to read you all um, this poem. And it is in the Journal of the National Conference on Race and Ethnicity in American Higher Education. The journal itself is committed to social change on race and ethnicity. And the special issue is entitled uh, Disability Justice, Race and Education. And the piece is called Just the Unicorn by Kat J. Stevens, otherwise me. <laughs> and um, I'm going to read this for you. The way that I wrote it, the way that I felt it, the way that I intended it to be heard by the reader. Just a unicorn. Just another model immigrant. Them. You make yourself do to shower. Me. But. Them. You don't have no disability. Me. But. Them. Them, you're too smart for all of that. Just another misunderstood gem. Reading at two. Gifted programs, skipping grades, honor societies, gifted kid gone rogue, wasted potential, bored in the classroom, almost failed out of high school, gifted college dropout. Just another Monday, my brain pains me. Sick, translucent fog, cradling, then choking with overwhelm. Professor's words I cannot follow. Fog from my shoulders to my eyeballs. Brows furrowed more deeply with each directionless thought. Is this real? Left tilted head, hearing words and sounds that mean nothing. Right tilted head, open stance begging and inviting focus to select me. 30, 40, 50 minutes into class and my brain finally gets into formation. Blue stain, fingertips, Adderall dust visible. Finally note taking with intention. Flick of the wrist dance, nails tap dancing on my keyboard just in time for the wind down of class. A jumbled race of question, thoughts, points of clarity and eagerness. My supernaturally molasses brain is now quick and quick band. Emotions on a thousand, contained to my body, chains to the seat. Just another Tuesday. Mistake number 75. Deleted another final paper. Three minutes to 11.59's deadline, obsessively reminding my mind to not forget, only for anxiety and adrenaline to quarrel it out, sweat bridling down my left temple, heart racing making Timberland-like beats, yet another begging email being composed. Dear doctor, insert whiteness here. Would you please grant, insert black here, me an extension? Insert woman here. I do apologize. Insert first generation here. 
For the inconvenience, insert immigrant here. Just another life. What I would give to be typical, neuro. Somebody's embodiment of diversity, neuro. Living as a black woman with ADHD, learning as a black woman with ADHD, zipping through elementary and middle school, honor student throughout. Around grade nine, I was just and barely fine, dipping from honors and AP to gym for a class boost, a GPA boost. Secondary school life without a diagnosis. Just another life, passing high school one point above its minimum, never did the homework, barely did the readings, found the most in class to say, teachers perplexed day by day. So much potential, they say. School carries the pain of a thousand paper cuts. I was bored anyway. And learning did me nothing for a harm. College was a repetitive rubber stamp, except I didn't have to go to class, so you could guess I didn't. Just another urban fairy tale. My school was poor, my hood far too black and brown. My boredom meant I walked away. There was nothing nobody could say. I love to learn. I hated school, so dropping out saved my life. Because when I finally re-enrolled, it was me and this journey, public community college, to elite liberal arts, to the Ivy League, to a fully funded doctorate, riddled with imposter syndrome, familiarity in reading, writing, forgetfulness along the way, amplified by fear and tears. Just another differently abled student. Would they realize they made a mistake by admitting me? When fortitude, resourcefulness, and creativity aren't enough, this professional student felt dumb, incapable, slow. Internalized ableist language and feelings reflected upon myself. My ADHD symptoms internalized as personal defects. Just another ableist university system. I'm working twice as hard in neurotypical university spaces that lack universal design, pretending not to see us outside of disability office spaces where we need supportive accommodations. Oh, the anger, the loss, the relief that finally came to me in doctoral studies and finally, a doctor said, I think it could be ADHD. I cried tears that were thick and hot. At my big age, decades spinning in barely functioning schoolhouses, where different means push out, where different means jailhouse. Because I lived my whole life afraid, internalizing my neurodiverse self as broken no good, intellectually inferior, forgetful, careless, dimwit self. Meanwhile, the involuntary hex built in the recesses of my brain, routines for survival, helped me to thrive. So despite failing and falling through the cracks and no one ever investigating, I'm having to relearn again, reading and writing and being skills. Just another invisible disability. New vocabulary like executive functioning and comorbid and rejection sensitivity and time blindness and motivationless and Adderall and Cognitive distortions and inattentive and emotional dysregulation and work and memory and hyperactivity and it's so much more than I lost my keys or I forget a lot. It's an invisible game 
and I am the Jenga. Just another realization. ADHD is a validation of my life. Before I was diagnosed, I owned weird or broken or odd, but rather I was invisible and ignored. Like many score before, black girls in urban, poor, any, all schools, in the educational jungle and educational ecosystem with barely enough staff or resources become black girls in liberal arts colleges referred to inaccessible private practice for expensive testing that don't take Medicaid, become black girls in the Ivy League willing themselves to perform excellence because the ancestors. Just the unicorn, become black girls in PhD programs, finally learning how they learn, even when it feels too hard, even when the stigmas are real, even when good island gals don't ask for help. Get diagnosed, take medication, use accommodations, write about it publicly, look for the healing in the message. I'm going to link this below. Thank you for listening.